Hello and welcome on Watches TV and today we have a rather surprising video to share with you and I will start with a question. What is the link between this toothpaste, microchips, wafers and the world of watchmaking? Well, they all share a common ingredient, if I can say so, diamonds. But probably not exactly the ones you would naturally be thinking of because here we are talking of extremely small diamonds and this is what we're about to discover together. During the EPHG, the trade fair of the suppliers of the watchmaking industry, I came across a Swiss company named uh, Purion, whose main mission is to propose diamond-based solution to be used in the three examples cited previously, but most importantly for grinding and polishing processes. But one of the really interesting things which I had never heard before is the provenance of these diamonds. You've probably heard about lab-grown diamonds using the Verneuil principle, where diamonds are in a certain way grown using mainly electricity for this. Well, in this case, diamonds are created using a spectacular explosive technique. Let's discover more about how it came into being. The company was founded as Rudolf Spring AG, and, and that was back in 1952. Actually, it was my granddad. He was an engineer, and he saw this um, business case recycling um, grinding wheels after they were used up there was still a tiny crust of diamond left in the 50s was very much like today there's a shortage on resources so there's a, a shortage of a natural diamond so he discovered and developed a process to recycle th these diamonds out of these grinding wheels so what are we actually talking about and how is it made diamond suspension is a let's say a sophisticated mixture of diamond particles well suspended in a carrier. A carrier can be some, some fat, some grease, some oil or synthetical lubricants. So one of our, our key products is the polycrystalline micron diamond and um, there's a unique synthesis process to um, make this kind of diamond. So it starts with graphite, which is carbon, same as diamond. And to transform graphite into diamond, you need uh, a huge amount of pressure and high temperatures. And this can be achieved by either in Mother Nature, in the volcanoes, or in hydraulic presses. But in our case for polycrystalline diamond, it's a detonation shock synthesis process. So there's a core consisting of metal powders and graphite. And then there's an explosive package around that, which weighs the explosive package alone weighs over four tons. And then we actually detonate this whole package so the, the explosive runs from the top to the bottom. It burns down like a candle, almost in a very controlled manner. And it creates a wave of, of a shock of a high pressure and high temperature. So that converts then the graphite, which is in the middle, it converts it from graphite to diamond. So after the synthesis, we have the diamond that is encapsulated in the metals that have molten in this process. So the next step is to uh, cut this into logs and then to dissolve these metals with acids. So then we actually get the diamond grains. Um, they then go through a purification process that removes residual graphite. Then we have the diamond particles which is then being processed um, in this facility. So then we need the grading. And then it goes to the sedimentation process, which is, let's say, very unique, very specific for the abrasive world. Typically, this is done by sieving, but we do it in water. This means sedimentation. This is very precise. In order to get a very fine particle size distribution, which is only having particles of one size, which give a perfect result on the grinding process or polishing process, you need to remove the coarse ones and the fine ones. Very simple. This is done in multiple steps. This means we have cycles. We start to sediment and then uh, that sedimenting is settling the diamond. And then we are using not the coarse ones that are in the sediment, but we are using what is in flotation. This is removed and further processed. For the subsequent particle sizes, 
Then we continue with the coarser one that are settled. And this goes in steps and steps and steps. So if we do a full run, this means starting from the very fine ones to the coarser ones, this takes about two months or something. So many weeks up to month. And we process particles from sizes like small nanometers up to microns and coarser microns. The fact of having similar sized microdiamonds in your grinding and polishing paste and solution is absolutely critical because this will fully determine the quality of these grinding and polishing processes. If you have only a few microdiamonds just a tiny bit bigger, well these ones could have a disastrous effect on these processes. It will scratch deeper the surface and obviously this is even more so important when we're talking microchips polishing considering the size of these chips found on these wafers that have been polished. In the watchmaking industry, requirements are naturally different in terms of size of these micro diamonds used, but the principle remains the same. You don't want to polish unevenly these surfaces, but their two tolerances are getting smaller and smaller. And to control this, well, every single batch needs to be quality controlled. No risk taken. What do we do here in the uh, quality control? Ähm, wir überprüfen alle Körnungen, die aus der Produktion kommen. Wir machen die Wareneingangsprüfung. Wenn wir Produkte von Kunden bekommen, werden sie erstmal geprüft, gemessen, optisch kontrolliert. Wir machen aber auch äh, Prüfungen für Mischung, die der Verkauf macht. Ähm, und da machen wir auch Messungen und äh, tun die optisch kontrollieren. Regarding this toothpaste example, well, these micro diamonds will also act as some kind of polishing paste, but this obviously doesn't represent the biggest part of this company's activity. But something which I really like with what we've discovered, and okay, I agree that I will be just a little bit biased and maybe a little bit chauvinistic too, well, it is the fact that it all started with some kind of ingenious idea for the watchmaking industry, and the company kept developing this idea, putting a lot of con and continuous efforts in R&D, and it's to Today, one of the world leader in providing these solutions for one of the most demanding industry, the microchip industry. And this company has production facilities in various countries today. And this does indeed reflect quite well the Swiss industrial landscape with a bunch of small sized companies who know that to keep existing, well, you need to propose continuous added value to your products and services through innovation and quality. Okay, and that's it for my very objective assessment about how this little country with no natural resources keeps moving on. But basically, you just can't stand still, otherwise natural evolution will do its job. Coming back on this company, and though they produce huge quantities of diamonds, well, just keep in mind that the biggest ones only measure one millimeter. No need to plan something stupid, no gem setting with such diamonds. Thanks for watching, see you real soon, and let's go for a different type of Viva watchmaking. All the best.